Welcome back and today we're going to be doing a cheap versus expensive another one in that series and we're looking at belts so these webbing type tactical belts are really popular not just with military and police and security guys but also with just general wear outdoor wear and people that like to go hunting trekking hikers and they're also getting popular with just pe people that want to have a, a nice usable belt and they don't particularly want a leather one they can be very cheap and they can go up to really really expensive so the question is you know is it worth investing in money when you're buying a belt and like most things there's a context to this i've found a couple of belts that i really really like and i wear all the time now i don't wear anything else i've tried loads of different ones in the past and we'll start at the the lower end and work up as we normally do so lowest end first amazon special you got this one here very very cheaply made no brand it is webbing it's fairly strong I mean that's not going to give way I wouldn't want to hang off it off a, a rope or something but um, it's, it's pretty decently strong and it uses one of these clips here so that just clips in show you around the other way as well clips together like so and then very simply you, you can change the length of it make it longer make it shorter these cost you know between five and ten pounds they're generally made in China uh, the stitching isn't great on them as you can see and they're not the the nicest belts in the world so the downsides to these are the webbing on them is so soft and malleable that when you wear them especially if you have heavy kit heavy kit tends to drag them down off your waist and once they start getting dragged down they just start running further and further down your waist and actually start pulling your trousers down so if you're wearing really heavy belt kit these are far from ideal the only way that you've got with this type of belt to you know stop that happening is to tighten it up really really tight which can become constrictive and uncomfortable and the other thing that tends to happen is they tend to start bending in the middle as you're wearing them and whether that's because of heavy kit or just as you're moving your body around and they then start cutting into you so that can really hurt over time you know if you're if especially if you're a, a guy in the military or the police or something and you're wearing this all day as part of your uniform and you're in harsh environments if you're getting sweaty and stuff like that you really don't want stuff like this digging into you and causing you problems they they do okay if you're just looking to you know use them as a sort of fashion accessory you've got a pair of cargo trousers that you're wearing at home or something doing a bit of gardening then they make quite a cheap alternate to a, a standard belt but as soon as you start hanging kit or doing anything you know like rough or extremely long hikes and stuff like that you start to realize that these things just aren't up to par in the same vein you can get some other companies that make similar types of belt this one has got an even simpler mechanism it's just that looping mechanism on there this is fly industries so these cost about 18 20 pounds the material is a little bit thicker not much it's wider but it is a bit more robust and a bit less inclined to fold up on you it's just got that a little bit more rigidity again these are not too bad the slight benefit with this one is that it's pretty easy if you need to you can just cinch it up and then if you're sitting down or having something to eat or something like that 
you can just slip that out and let it back out again. So it's quite easy to adjust while it's on in comparison to that first one, which is they're a bit of a nightmare to adjust while that you have to really undo them, uh, pull a bit of material out, do it back up again, see if it fits. They're, they're a bit harder to adjust on the go. And again, that belt's not too bad, but you start having the same problems as you did with the first one maybe to a slightly lesser degree but basically it will start hurting you it starts getting dragged down it drags your belt kit down and if you're uh, carrying a holster and pistol and a load of magazines even more concerning that it those kind of belts will really mess with your ability to cleanly unholster and holster your pistol because as you pull the pistol out to unholster it the the pistol's got retention in the holster so you're fighting against that retention to pull the pistol out for safety reasons and if the belt starts riding up because it's really loose and it's got no rigidity then you're not actually going to be unholstering your pistol you're just pulling your, your belt and trousers up in the air and that can lead to some problems. You don't get a smooth um, deployment of the firearm. And worse still, you know, if you're dragging all that kit up and it starts exposing bits of clothing and stuff like that, you might get snagged and that can lead to all kinds of problems. What you want is to be able to unholster a pistol really cleanly and keep it away from getting snagged on anything. So then we get to these more rigid options. And these are, gun belts really or kit belts and they're much better if you're um, carrying a pistol then you would definitely want to go for something more rigid like this so this here is my favorite and most worn belt for every day and it is the core systems belt so that actually has a little clip on there and it's got a ratchet system on it so when you push that clip in you can ratchet it back and then if you want to cinch it up it just cinches up like so really strong that doesn't go anywhere that I've had this for three or four years now and it's still absolutely fine I've heard people before say oh maybe that ratchet system wears well I've worn that every day for three to four years I've been carrying kit on it been carrying holstered pistols and all sorts of stuff at work running around ranges and uh, loads of mags and stuff clipped on it never had any issues and the good thing about these is you can cinch it right up so when you're working you cinch it up when it's around your waist and you've got all that kit on there so it doesn't go anywhere and then if you want to sit down for a meal you can just press that clip in and bring that out a bit further and a bit further still so really comfortable really quick to fasten up really quick to undo and then if you look at the thickness of that it's actually got an internal uh, much more rigid core to it which I'm guessing is part of their name core belts and it's very very thick indeed I can't bend that at all it will not bend so when I first got this I thought maybe that would be um, a little uncomfortable to wear I've actually found it to be one of the most comfortable belts I've ever worn because it doesn't bend and twist it doesn't dig into me and that rigidity makes it more comfortable you would automatically think that a, a rig rigid belt like that would be um, more likely to be uncomfortable but it's quite the opposite and I really um, suggest you check these out I'll leave links in the description below for the company and maybe if I can find a couple of these on Amazon I'll throw those up as well they do also make leather versions so if you want a um, dress belt you know something that looks a bit smarter or good with a pair of jeans and you don't like this webbing look then they they cover all options they've got a variety of different buckles that one's their standard sort of tactical belt but they have loads and loads of different types different colors so if you don't like this color they've got black brown green etc and then if you're a serious end user 
and you're actually carrying uh, holsters and kit then this is core systems as well and you can see I've got AR holsters on there Glock holsters that's the front section so this one again it's got the same clip on it so it just clicks in and out holster on there and the difference with this this one's called their battle belt is it actually has an internal piece as well which has got this velcro on it here so what you do is you wear the internal piece around your trousers inside the waistband of your trousers and then you just fasten the outer piece to that so that that's not covered by any of your belt loops on your belt that's simply uh, sitting on the outside of all that and it's velcroed on it stays on really nicely and that allows you to have all this kit on there without it messing around and getting caught up in your belt loops etc when you get these uh, they both work on the same principle that you have to cut them to length so they come really long and then you can undo these two screws that bit then flips up and you can remove the belt from this buckle once you've done that these belts come marked I don't know if you can see the markings on there there should be some size markings and you can simply cut that to size push it back into there this piece has like a, a claw inside it so as you fasten it down the claw cinches down onto that and then those two set screws there lock it all into place and also press down onto the belt itself and that is really really strong that will not come out you could hang off that and you can size the belt that way so you, you can do it so that you don't have a load of extra belt hanging off or if you wanted if you were someone that went up and down in weight or maybe you were you know um, utilizing it over the top of some kit and you wanted uh, the ability to wear it underneath or over the top then you could give yourself a bit of extra space there so you could cinch it right up or you could uh, loosen it off and you would have a, a bigger belt so they, they really cater for every different aspect they are um, I think about 80 pounds and the battle belts more I'm not entirely sure how much that was I can't remember um, I'll chuck a couple of links up but it was over a hundred pounds that seems a lot of money but when you consider that I've had complete comfort wearing that 80 pound belt every day for the last three to four years then I don't think that's a huge amount of money to spend I didn't need any other belts that's the only belt I've worn I like wearing belts you know um, I, I'm of a waist size where I've got quite big um, chunky thighs and calves so I end up with trousers that are always kind of a bit loose on the waist because if I buy them that are tight on the waist then I generally can't get them over my thighs and calves so a belt's really useful for that and I want to wear something that is comfortable all day these ones I forget that I've got on if I wear one of those cheap uh, loose webbing belts then I'm constantly fiddling them with it throughout the day it's digging into me etc so I would thoroughly recommend spending the extra money whether you're a tactical end user or even if you're just someone that wears a belt all day every day I would suggest buying yourself one of those treat yourself for Christmas get your girlfriend or whatever to buy you one and you will really really not look back from there and the, the ratchet system is um, game changing you know you, that's so nice to be able to loosen it off when you sit down on the sofa or something and then when you go out and, and go about your business you can just cinch it up one handed it's no problem at all Hope you enjoyed that guys, uh, I look forward to seeing you soon, I'm at shop next week so I'll get as much content out as I can while I'm there but the likelihood is it will all be uh, in a big video at the end of shop week, uh, it'll probably take me a couple of days to recover, uh, it'll be the week after early in that week I'll get a video out with all the best bits from shop and I'll probably be stopping in to see core belts while I'm there so hopefully that'll be on the video. 
Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.